Uh, as you know, again, if you listen with any regularity, I am a sucker for a great book from Heroes of the Military. Love it. Love it when it's true. Love it when they're writing their stories, telling their stories of their life. And how history was changed by these great heroes. And the least we can do is say thank you by going out and buying 10 or 15 copies of the book. I think that's a great <clears> idea. <throat> right? Give them away as gifts. So let me bring in Eileen Bjorkman, retired colonel and author of The Fly Girls Revolt, the story of the women who kicked open the door to fly in and combat. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Nice to have you on, and thank you for the service. You're welcome. We were uh, uh, talking earlier about this missing fighter jet where... The pilot had to eject, and the plane is now missing. We assume that the plane ended up in the, you know, in the ocean, in the water, but they're still looking for that. So interesting tie that we had you booked for today's show because your story is just fascinating, and you know from flying and kicking that door open. You know, look, I want people to get the book, so don't give away too many stories here. But give us the basis of, of what made you decide to write the book and how you got here. So there have been a lot of books written about uh, women, some, a group of women named the Wasp who flew in World War II. Mm-hmm. And there have been a lot of books written by uh, younger women who had the opportunity to fly fighter aircraft, a lot of memoirs. But the story of my generation, which is a generation who actually made that bridge from World War II to kicking the door open, that story hasn't been written very much. And so as my generation is getting older, I just wanted to make sure that we got that story out there, that people didn't forget about everything that the women aviators of the 70s and 80s did as well. I think it's so important. Hi, Colonel. Uh, this is Jane. The I love the title and part of it, Kick the Door to Fly, Kicked Open the Door to Flying Combat. So you talk about the women who laid the groundwork for women to eventually fly, not only fly, but also fly in combat, but you call them fly girls. So explain to us who the fly girls are and what they did. So fly girls was actually a term that came about apparently in in the 1920s, and it was applied really to kind of that generation. You had the flappers, you know, women who were becoming more liberated. And and then as women started flying more, they they started to dub them fly girls in general. And so, so then when my generation came around and we're the first generation to start flying military, military aircraft actually in the military in the 70s, um, it just seemed like an appropriate term to apply to them. So I don't ever remember anybody actually using that term back in those days, but but it was an older term that, that seemed to apply to that generation as well. You know, it, it sounds on the surface like the largest problem I would think you and your colleagues uh, faced, and that would be a, a sexism yeah. um, wall that was up there, but it doesn't sound like that was a hindrance. What was the biggest wall you had to get over? So the biggest wall really was a law that was passed in 1948 that prohibited women from uh, flying uh, or engaging the enemy in combat, you know, in an aircraft, and also from serving on combat ships. And so even when women did uh, start to fly military aircraft in the 70s and 80s, that law prohibited them from really being able to be used to the best of their abilities within the military. And so not only was it not uh, not fair to the women who couldn't, you know, be used to the best of their ability. It also wasn't fair to commanders who uh, who didn't necessarily have the best people to fly their aircraft and also didn't, it caused scheduling issues and, and all sorts of things. So it wasn't fair to anybody, really. You know, it's funny, Colonel, is, is you often hear people go, well, listen, even now, women in combat, when, when stress hits, you really want a woman making decisions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you do. yeah, put me down for a yes. <laughs> Good God, if your team wasn't running the world, imagine what shape we'd be in. So <laughs> that that should never even be a part of the discussion. Let me ask you about one person you mentioned in the book, Jacqueline Cochran. As far as I know, no relation, but who knows? Spelled the same. So, so Jacqueline Cochran, yeah, she was actually a, a relatively famous or very famous aviator back in the day, back in the 30s and 40s. And, and uh, she was instrumental in 
bringing to uh, bringing the WASP to fruition, the Women Air Force Service Pilots, uh, which is a group of civilian women who ferried aircraft around the country during World War II to free up men to you know be able to serve overseas. So, and uh, they were never uh, they were never actually brought into the military uh, just for expediency, but for all practical purposes, they were in the military. So they're considered really kind of that first generation of women military aviators, even though they weren't actually in the military. You should be proud of this effort because it's great to be able to tell these stories and leave them for history. When you go out and you talk to people, and I assume you're a speech maker, and you go out and you you meet young people who want to get into the business, what is your sense of younger women wanting to be in the service and wanting to do what you do? I know it's a different fighting force now, but drone operators are crucial, and the new way of war is crucial for our defense. Are, Are women lining up to do it? So, you know, you read a lot about the current recruiting problems that we're having, um, and that's both men and women. Um, but I think in general, women still want to serve, just like young men want to serve. Uh, we just have an economy right now that you know, people can get good jobs on the outside. But right. we don't have any shortage of people who want to be pilots in the military anymore. So, in, in fact, we have a you know, a backlog, I think, of people who are trying to get in to be pilots. It's it's still a very rewarding profession. And, and it's not just about pilots either. You know, it's one of the things I, I talk about in the book is that, that it's, uh, it's there's all kinds of aviation jobs for sure. uh, for people in the military. So, and, and like I said, there's, there's really no shortage of people who want to fly in the no. military. And it takes hundreds of support staff to make sure a plane goes up and does it safely. By the way, a flight test engineer... And I believe you're executive director at the at the Air Force Test Center, right, at Edwards? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. How many planes did you, uh, you know, have to maybe crash land? <laughs> I've, never, I've never actually had to crash land an airplane, so I've been very lucky in that regard. So, um, I have had a few aircraft that had emergencies when I was on board, but I've uh, never actually been in a crash. I don't know. Was Chuck Yeager a flight test engineer? It feels like Chuck Yeager was crashing planes every 10 minutes. I know they made for great... <laughs> Stories, talk show host stories, but maybe you were just a better pilot. You know, how about that? <laughs> no, I was, a, and actually, I was a backseater. I wasn't a pilot in the Air Force, but um, but Chuck Ager, yeah, he was a test pilot. And and back in the day, back when he was flying a lot, you know, in the fifties and sixties, there were a lot more accidents in, right. in those right. days. So it, right. it and some yeah. a lot of it was just we were pushing the boundaries of what airplanes could do a lot more than we are today and and so it just resulted in um you know just resulted in more accidents so uh, last word, Jane. Colonel, I just want to say thank you for writing about women in the military. Uh, it's so important that people learn and, and we know the impact that women have had. My mother was a proud Air Force. Uh, she retired as a major from the Air Force, but always proud to have served her time. So thank you for writing this book. Oh, you're very welcome. And, and uh, many thanks to your mothers for, for her service as well. Fly Girls Revolt, the story of the women who kicked open the door to fly in combat. Colonel Eileen Bjorkman will be appearing where? She's at the Pritzker Military Museum, uh, September 21st at 6 p.m. And uh, Discussing tickets, her book. Tickets and information and all that, uh, just go to the Pritzker Military Museum site. Uh, Google it up. It's the fastest way to go.